So, uh, welcome to today's seminar with, with uh, Siddhartha Jaina, who will tell us about uh, the mystery of uh, total search problems and what true complexity has to do with it, roughly. Okay, so happy to have you with us. Please take it away. Right. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, so this is, uh, you know, about true complexity of NFP, and this is joint work with uh, William Byers, Albert Robert, Ram Tao, Alexander Salander. Me, I guess, and Gilbert, Gilbert um, and this is our affiliations when we wrote the paper. This, are, this is our affiliations a year later. We moved around a lot. Um, so, the you know the start of this talk are these two uh, entities, one of which I presume you know well. So let's understand the other first. Um, so, what does TFMP stand for? TFMP stands for Total Function NP. Uh, this, these are search problems, so which are verifiable, which means that you're given a polytime relation on two inputs x and y, where you're given an input x and you want to output from y such that this pair is in the relation. Uh, the promise that you have is that r is total, which is what the t stands for, uh, which means that for every input there is an output such that the, this pair is in the relation. And this is what makes this class interesting because the decision problem is trivial. Uh, I would just all it up for you guys. So um, I want you to keep two problems in your working memory. Um, I'll call them sync of DAG. Here you have some grid, and I'll call the special word x1, comma one the distinguished source, which I promised you always has an outgoing edge. And I also promised you that edges always go down in the grid. Um, and your objective is to find a sink in this exponentially large tag. Uh, if I lie to you, if the distinguished source is not a source, you can report that as solution. If I lie to you and the edges doesn't, do not always go down the way, you can report that as a solution. Uh, the other problem is called sink of line. Um, in this problem, you don't have the grid structure. So edges could be going anywhere, but you do have some distinguished source. Um, but what structure you do have is that you have reversibility of edges. What this gives you is that uh, every vertex has integrity one. So in particular, you can't have merging of paths like you did in sync of that. And again, the objective is to find a sync of that. And now I have to confess, I like you a little bit. Um, you need to remember one more problem, which is just sync of line where you are also allowed to report uh, Non distinguished sources. So, this dotted green guy. Okay. Now that we have three problems, let's define three classes, which will just be by reduction to these problems. So, PLS, polynomial local search, is all relations reducible to same tag. PPAD, the sense of polynomial parity argument directed, is all relations reducible to end of line. And similarly, the S and PPAD are sans for sync because it's reduced reduction to sync. This be explicit the reduction here is actually kind of two reductions, uh, where you have one reduction which uh, maps the input of your problem A to the input of your target problem B, and also another reduction which maps the output generated by your solve of problem B back to a valid output for problem A. Okay. Now, the key thing here is that normally these problems are defined in the white box model and the black box model. Uh, in the white box model, I give you a poly size circuit, which when you give it as, as input the index of a vertex in the graph, it outputs the successor, for example. In the black box model, this circuit is just replaced uh, with an output. Right, so um, what do these, what does the FNP look like? Um, so because, so the fact is that we don't expect the FNP to have complete problems, which is why we necessarily have to study these subclasses, which do behave nicely. And uh, this is sort of the classical hierarchy that people studied starting in the 90s. And I've defined three of these classes for you. I also put this weird thing here called PLS intersection PPA. Uh, the only reason I did that is because a lot of problems that we care about lie in both PLS. That are reducible to single back and PPAD. They're also reducible to end of line. And below that, all the way down here, I have FP, which is just all addition solvable. Okay. 
So precisely to capture this uh, problem of like things lie between FP and PPL assembly like PPAD. In the past decade, people defined uh, complexity classes in between these two. Uh, I'll, I'll tell you what CLS stands for, stands for Factory Local Search. Um, think about creating this entity being sort of complete for this problem. Um, and a breakthrough result, which was published a couple of years ago now, um, is that this naturally defined class CLS is actually equal to this intersection of two classes, PLS and intersection BPA. Uh, this was quite surprising. People expected CLS to be uh, strictly weaker than this intersection. And it's kind of interesting that the intersection of two complexity classes has a natural characterization and in particular a natural complete problem. Um, following up on that, the same group, um, which is, is the work that I presented to you now, we also noticed that not only does CLS collapse to this intersection, even EOPR collapses to this intersection, which was below CLS in this diagram. Uh, so in particular, that implies EOPR is equal to CLS. I also threw in another class here called SOPR. All I will say about it is that SOPL has the same relation to EOPL that sync of line has to end up. So just a technical thing. Can, do you think in your Zoom window, could you try to change the speaker view or something? Mm -hmm. Just like, no, 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 I don't want to see that thingy, but okay. could it change to like, what, if you try to change to your view, like just to show the speaker, which should be you at this point. Oh, like, so the window is showing, showing like this thing on gallery or speaker or okay. Uh, so I'm on Zoom and my view. Because I can't control that. I'm gonna laptop it in the top right, top right. Okay, I'm sorry, I think I don't know how to do it on my iPad. Okay. Um, I guess we should... Wait. No. Okay. Yeah. Hopefully. Then um, go back to full screen. Take a moment. Anyway, so. And remove this. That you can, yeah, at least, or keep it somewhere where you're not. If you, if the top right corner of your slides, if you don't have stuff there, you can have the window there, and that's nice. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I think Is that I, a good place? I'll. If you can keep it like that, there, that's too big really. If it's not in the in, in the way of your strengths. Yeah, I think for most of for most part it should be fine. Okay, perfect. Sorry for we we do experience some technical issues. I don't know what it is. Yes. Okay. Right, go ahead. So yeah, so like I said, uh, sync of potential line has the same relation to end of potential line that sync of line has to end of line. And you should think of if you don't have space in your memory to uh, store this, don't have to listen to it. But end of potential line, you should just think of having both structure, the grid structure, and the reversible edge. Okay. So the main question we asked in this work was there were like multiple collapses in this hierarchy, essentially, should we expect more? Um, well, if you prove a white box separation, that in particular implies P not equal to NP. Why? Well, you have FP at the bottom and the FNP is contained in FNP, all relations, all will, which have all relations which have short certificates, no matter whether they're total or not. And uh, FNP not equal to FP implies P not equal to NP just because of the substitution for that. So we can't really hope to give a white box separation right now, um, but we could give a black box separation, which is what uh, complexity for this idea. Um, so what's known? There is this uh, very seminal paper by B. Uh, which basically showed that these triangle complexity classes are incomparable with black box model. There was some follow up work, uh, which basically resolved um, that, you know, this right tower is incomparable to the left tower. Um, but some questions were left open. In particular, I think the most famous one is whether, whether PLS was in PPP with respect to the norm, uh, not in PPP with respect to norm. So that's our main result. In this hierarchy, there are no more black box collapses. Um, 
All right. So this is a summary of our results in TFNB. Now let me completely change that. Yeah, just just a yes. question uh, to go back. So so just to understand, is it like um, this will be a vague question, but do we like expect black box reductions to somehow be you know the full truth, only that we can't prove it in a white box setting, or do we know whether things actually happen on the way from you know black box to gray box to white box? So uh, what I would say is that I am not aware of any white box techniques to solve the FMP problems. Uh, so everything we know works in the black box. Therefore, we yeah to overcome this these separations, you would really have to do something. But who knows whether white box uh, matches black box? Okay, so we don't know, but this could be taken like a, as you know circumstantial evidence that this might actually be the truth. Yes, as yeah, as as usual in computer. Yeah, no fair. Enough. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, so now let me talk about truth complexity. Um, so yeah, I guess I can. Uh, so it's well known that the proof system resolution, which I'm sure we're going to define for this audience, uh, is simulated by Shalali Island. Uh, as you know, it's a semi algebraic proof system which captures some LP hierarchy. Well, there was a question actually. Do we know that UE and UEOPL is different from FP? Good question. Uh, yes, we know that because uh, we can prove uh, query your bounds for it. So, and again, we have a black box separate. Black box separate. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, it's well known that resolution is simulated by Shari Arabs. What we prove is that this simulation actually needs to exploit exponentially large coefficients. So in particular, if you encode the coefficients of Shirai atoms in unary, then resolution does not is not simulated by unary Shirai atoms. Now I showed you two very different looking results. Is this a fact and step paper where we prove two completely different things? No. This result is actually equivalent to TLS not in TTDS with respect to an ortho, which are these two classes that defined to you earlier. Um, so that's the message of this talk, that there is a bridge between proof complexity and TFMP, which we exploit to get these results. Um, let's uh, see what the bridge is between more carefully. So first word that we will bridge between is these query analogs of TFMP classes. And uh, what I mean by this is that the notion of reductions in these classes are now shallow decision trees. By shallow, I mean polylogging that. And from the definition of the problems earlier, you gave me a circuit, I gave you a circuit to compute the successor. Now I gave you a shallow decision to compute the successor and so on. I think there is a question in the chat whether this holds for low degree Shirali atoms or whether you're capturing all of Shirali atoms. I don't know if I'm interpreting the question correctly. Um, so, I guess uh, I'm saying that polylog and degree Shiralia, unary Shirali atoms does not simulate resolution. Does that answer the question? Um, yeah, does it answer the question? Yes, it does answer the question. Okay, cool. We'll see the formal statement later. Okay, great, thanks. All right, the second world is uh, proof complexity, um, which is, is there a short derivation of the same concept? Again, don't need to tell you. Um, and here I've drawn a picture of proof systems where I put an edge if the proof system on the top simulates the proof system at the bottom. I think I might be missing an edge between polynomial characters, complex, but you get the idea. Um, why did I draw this picture? Well, look at it. Like there must be something going on there. It looks too similar. Uh, let's make this uh, more common. So I think I need to remove this now. Um, so why do TFMP search problems um, define CNF fallacies? Well, if I give you a black box version of single DAG, I can construct a CNF that encodes this fallacy. This DAG has no spin. This is just because, um, you know, in particular decision trees can be similar by CNFs, and I can just encode no things as a small bit CNF. 
Sorry if I'm getting stuck on these. I was just digesting your previous slides. So did you say that notion that's over GF2 simulates notion that's over the integers? Yes. The only way I know how to prove this is, oh, uh, I think this might be true for unary Nelson-Schatz over Z. I was thinking about well, how you would deal with things like perfect matching and things like that. Maybe is that hard for notion of that? Like is, is that maybe not true for, not known for polynomial calculus? I think if you look at polynomial calculus over like, Integers and over GF2, and they might be incomparable. Oh, okay. Uh, so I think that this is true by uh, recent result of bus uh, planning in Piazzo. That's the only way I know how to show it. Uh, but there might be mistakes in the proof of text part of this talk. Uh, I guess okay. I'd rather talk about this. Okay. So, yeah, so back to why this corresponded to two. Um, search problems in the black box model can be translated to CNS. And CNS very naturally defines search problems. This is just because I give you an unsatisfiable CNF and I give you an input, find me a falsified cluster. More explicitly, this is the paper I was talking about. There was a follow up. Um, to this work by Stan Bus, now Fleming, and Elsman Payato, which actually proved that the FMV problems are equivalent to proof systems with a reflection principle. Reflection principle just means that this proof system can prove its own paths. Um, but I, I won't be telling you about this first point in more detail, but I don't understand it. So this is the final picture. I squished the two hierarchies together. Um, the things in yellow and blue were known before. Resolution equivalent PLS is, I think, folklore. And Nansen Sator F2 equivalent PPA is a result from this ITCS paper from a few years ago, which me and Robert were also both. Um, so, not to be here, PPADS is equivalent to unary Charlie Adams, PPAD is equivalent to unary Nansen Sats. Uh, we define a new proof system we call reversible resolution, which captures uh, SOPL, and a version of that proof system with terminals captures UPL. And again, FP is just three light resolution. Um, this is again folklore. Okay. Um, so here are my results again. Um, resolution is not in unary Shirali Adams. This implies PLS is not in PPDS. Well, you can go from PLS not in PPDS to PLS not in PPP by a simple combinatorial lemma. Uh, and reversible resolution is not similar by null cell Um And okay, so I should mention that this idea that we have on PPDS implies not if he was independently noted by the one and Um so yeah so let's see some characterizations now. Uh, I'm gonna be cheating and showing you these this once but why is resolution with uh PLSF? Well first let's uh, let me tell you what PLSF means. Um, given a relation which is in PLS Informally, I would define PLS depth to be the depth of the reduction between two values, which by definition includes some. And um, what does the reduction do? The reduction constructs a uh, some vertex at V. And for every vertex, we have decision trees, which uh, again, in particular, shallow decision trees, which give us the successor. And given a Solution, which is a state, uh, it gives us the output for the actual problem. Right? Um, I put a star on the sink because sinks are not exactly verifiable. How do you check that there is something mapping to it if you don't have a reversible edge? So solutions are actually defined as vertices which map the sink. 
Okay, so you just have to go one step back and plug. And formally, the other steps is now uh, log of the vertex size that you construct, plus the maximum depth of any successor distance. Okay, so we'll see why uh, resolution weight is at most risk the other step. Uh, I'll be using the prover to their characterization of resolution weights um, without proving it. Uh, if you haven't seen it before, it's just that you play this game where uh, you're trying to prove that the CNF is unsatisfiable with the least amount of memory and that is some adversary who's trying to pull you. What will we do? We'll start at the distinguished source um, and we'll start going down the deck. And after taking a step, we can essentially forget where we came from. Uh, so at any given point, uh, we're not really storing more than polylog n. Um, whatever, we don't have more than polylog n. Uh, until we reach a sink and then we're done. Okay. So you just have to store like at most two vertices or three vertices right there. So the resolution width uh, is given that the LSDT reduction I showed you earlier, the resolution width is at most like two times log vertex size plus the max resolution. Yes. Uh, what magnitude should I think of the institution or poly n? Uh, think of it as 2 uh, If it's first poly n, then like it would just be an empty because you can just iterate and find the same. If it is 2 to the n, then this, the resolution width is no more than 2 n. Or we need to the axon. Oh, right. Uh, again, I guess maybe it should be more careful. I guess you not you don't really need to remember the like the name of the vertex you're in doesn't really uh, factor into the weight of the solution. It should be fine. Uh, Okay, maybe I can answer that off time so that's fine. Sorry. Oh. Okay. Uh, so the other direction is just like that a diag like resolution proof is already kind of a single guy to that thing. Um, why is that? Um, I just have to flip the proof, so to say. So a resolution proof is you start with your axioms and you apply the rule until you derive the null clause. Um, if you just now think of your null clause as a root vertex, um, and you know each edge just reads one variable, so that gives you a DAG, uh, and you're just trying to find stinks of your DAG to um, be able to report unsatisfied clauses. And um, the caveat is that I give you a special tag which had a grid structure. Um, but the idea for that is very simple. It just says that um, I will construct a new grid which has, let's say, levels on one axis and a copy of the vertex on the other axis. So for every vertex, I will make a copy for every level. And I will activate that vertex if in the actual DAG, it was on that level. And I get a grid. So these are cool. OK. So yeah, again, um, the other step is at most log of size plus that's it. Okay. Um, let me see how much time I have. I so uh, should I stop at ten fifty or at eleven? Uh, you can keep going to eleven. We started a bit late. Okay. Um, then I will show you this uh, one side of my unary resolution. The unary mass transfer degree is TKD level. The direction I'll show you is. Um, if there is an end of line formulation for a CNF, then there is a null sensor proof 
uh, or reputation for the CNF. Uh, again, you should think of EUL formulation as a reduction to end of line. And yeah, completely as a depth D reduction, then I give you a Nassan Sarskobit degree already, and size uh, L is the size of the vertex L uh, times two to the order. Uh, let's prove. Um, so we're given this formulation which has a vertex set for every vertex that has a successor vertex, a predecessor, sorry, successor tree, predecessor tree, and an output tree for this solution. So I'll define a function for every vertex, uh, which is minus one if it's a, this. This so this function is always zero for the distinguished source. Uh, if it's not the distinguished source, it's minus one if it's still a source. It's one if it's a proper sink. Uh, proper sink is just what I define. Uh, no, no isolated sink. Not non isolated sink, yes. Um, and it's zero otherwise. And I claim that this function can be computed in depth by P. Uh, this should not be very surprising. I'm sort of essentially stating, restating that end of line is in PF and more quantitatively. Uh, so you just check the successor tree and uh, for the proper sync, you check the successor tree and then go ahead and check the successor tree again and all this. So I'll, I'll, I hope you believe me that that only incurs constant factors. Um, so how do we turn this into a null Sansar proof? Um, well, I can convert. So this, like how we convert CNS into polynomials, uh, I can convert this the path of these decision trees into polynomials and rewrite SV as uh, summation of this path times minus one for all the minus one leads plus summation of these paths for one piece. Um, and I claim that I can write this, I can factorize it and add this not CL here. What do I mean by that? Uh, each leaf corresponds to a uh, clause in the CNF. And uh, since this is a solution, uh, this is unsatisfied. So in particular, the polynomial comparing uh, uh, corresponding to that clause is a factor of this path. And um, this means that I can rewrite the sum of all these functions as some sum of uh, PICI, which is starting to look like an Alstom such proof now. But what is this sum? The sum is precisely the number of stings in the graph defined by this reduction minus the number of non distinguished sources in this graph defined by this reduction, which must be one. So, any questions for anyone? Okay, then. So, yes, so you're saying, I mean, that the factor. Uh, the, the, the fact that you can factor this thing is, I guess, that once you get to the leaf, it has to falsify the clause. And then if you think about it, you realize that the clause is like a factor. But I guess, are you changing? You could also just multiply by the clause, or would you, I'd like you, would, would you lose too much? Just to, I'm just curious. Like basically take DEL and then multiply by CL and it will find. Or does your degree. Uh, do I'm sorry, what do you multiply by CL? Uh, you have this DL thingy. Oh, yeah, yeah. And then you're arguing that this is actually DL prime times CL, which is true. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to, yes, you could, you only, you want to like multiply this particular term slash monomial with that term, right? If you wanted to multiply all of them with the sum of all of them, I guess. No, 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 no. I just take every DL, I would just multiply with the corresponding CL. But like it's a little, little bit stupid because I know it's it's a factor already, but it's like it can't hurt me. No, but uh, now how are you sure that that still corresponds to that function that you're trying to compute, which you need for this result? 
think semantically, the same, the same, but we, we don't have to. It's not, not important. I think it's still fine, but uh, okay. Oh, it won't change the function. Yeah, it will take a C now. It takes square of it. It's the same C now. Oh, okay. But again, you're using the fact that it has this factorization yeah, yeah, to yeah. show that. <laughs> it comes. Yeah. Like, I don't see how you prove this without using the fact that it's a factorization. You can take it offline. Cool. All right, so now let me say something about separation. Um, a key lemma for proving that this separation with bad resolution is not similar by unary unary atoms is we actually give a robust separation of SOPL from mass and plus. So, as a reminder, sync of potential line is think of that without merging of parts because that also has reversibility of edges. Okay, so what do I mean by robust? Um, we'll modify the Nassan Sats proof system to refute CNFs or um, approximately. What do I mean? Epsilon Nassan Sats is just a proof such that the sum of these, you know, polynomial factors and maxims is bounded within one minus epsilon one minus epsilon for all inputs. And the question is, which, what's the are talking about? Uh, um, I'll eventually talk about F2, but like I can make this definition for any field. No. Oh, sorry, yeah, no, I cannot do that. I guess, uh, the point like epsilon is, is epsilon. I guess I'm alpha not. here. You're, you're saying that for any assignment I plug in, I'm within one minus epsilon or one plus epsilon, but yes. it's not strictly speaking an equality, am I right? It's like more like you're hitting this interval. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm using the same thing. It belongs to one minus yeah, epsilon. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Let's say we're talking about real. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the reason I'm uh, glossing over it is because it's not a, like, you shouldn't think of this as a nice proof system. It's not even verifiable. Um, but we're just using this as sort of a tool to get what we want. Um, what we show, so what we want to show is that every, F, so this is just some constant epsilon. Epsilon, constant epsilon and that's our application of SOPL requires polynomial degree. How do I do that? Um, the idea is to give, uh, uh, randomized decision to search reduction uh, to some thing in like you know query complexity which I already know as well study. So what we show is that um, epsilon null sensors proofs for SOPL uh, imply polynomial approximations for R, which is why I'm thinking of this as reals because the Real degree or real approximate degree of R is known to be at least through 10. Okay. Um, here's a teaser for what I will do. Uh, so note that like you're in, you're given an input for R and you want to somehow um, map, like you want to encode the uh, fact that um, R is one or zero in the solutions to SOPL. You want this is not meant for you to understand what's going on. First, let's figure out what a reduction means. Uh, reduction is a pair uh, of functions and distinguished thing. So, this function just maps an input to R to an input to S of L. Okay. What does it need to satisfy? It needs to satisfy that every bit of the output is a depth T decision tree of the input. This is why it's low depth. Um, and the second property I need is that for any X, for any input to R, the only solutions of the output of this reduction are active sinks on the last row. Now, this is sort of a weird property. It feels like I'm tying my hand through. Um, but 
this will just be convenient technically as well. Um, I will also promise you that U is a planted solution in the graph, where which means that this special U I gave you is always the same. You can find it. you can verify that. Um, and what I promise you is that if R is zero, then then only solution in the graph is the special U. If R is one, then there are at least two solutions. Okay. Um, now, deterministic reductions won't be enough for me, so I'll define a randomized reduction which is the distribution of a deterministic reduction. Okay. So now I want to show you why an ideal reduction um, gives you an approximate polynomial for R. What's an ideal reduction? Um, given some randomized reduction, which is this bold y bold u, for every y, that no probability here, the conditional distribution of the planted solution, given this uh, output, which is an input to S of the other, is uniform over the solutions of y. Okay, uh, so no questions about the definition. Then let me show you why this helps. Uh, I'll define a polynomial Q uh, over this y comma u, which is just uh, summation pi ai, where I take the terms corresponding to solutions of y. So now if I have a randomized reduction, I take the expectation of this polynomial, then this I can rewrite this as expectation over y, then expectation over solutions in y of this pi u prime ai u prime. So what are pi and ai? Oh, so we're uh, assuming that um, so we're doing a proof by contradiction. Okay. We're assuming that there is a low degree null science R proof for SOPR. Yes. And using this reduction and that proof, we're giving an approximation to R. Oh, okay. okay. So this is the terms in the null science R reputation corresponding to the solution. Key argument is the internet. Sorry. P R U prime is an axiom corresponding to. Yeah, A I U prime is the axiom corresponding to this solution. Mm -hmm. And P I U prime is whatever polynomial factor yeah. is in the null sense of proof of theta. Thank you. Why is it? I don't know a priority that's a uniform distribution. I'm assuming that my reduction is ideal. Given the distribution of y, you derive expectation of y. Here is the distribution of y. Reductions. Yeah, so I'm not saying that the distribution is uniform. I'm saying whatever distribution my reduction gives me, let me take expectation over that. Okay. okay. So why did I define ideal this way? Well, if my reduction is ideal, I can just rewrite this as um, you know expectation over uniform over solutions of y. U prime, PI, U prime, PI. Okay. Let me rewrite this as because it's the uniform distribution, I can just take one over solutions of y, solutions of y, y, U prime. And now, using the fact that we started with the proof of proof by contradiction, and this is a null sense as proof, um, I will um, conclude that this. Polynomial actually approximates this one over solution y quad plus. And the idea is just that now because my reduction promised me that if r is zero, this term is like one plus minus epsilon. And if r is one, this term is at most uh, one plus epsilon by two. Once you have that, you can use like standard boosting techniques to increase this gap and get an approximation to r. 
So that's uh, about what I want to show you about the idea reduction. So I think, yeah, I can have enough time to show you our reduction and show you why it's not. Right. <laughs> so um, what's our reduction? I will construct a very stupid graph. I will um, take a distinguished uh, source and just put a linear path down to the last row and plan the solution there. Now, for every other row, so I have n minus one rows left. For every other row, if xi is one, then I will again plant this in your path. If xi is zero, I do not. Oh, this is in the or instance. Yes, so xi, x is the input to the or instance, yeah. or to input to or on n minus one. Yeah. Right. Um, I won't expect this to work. So we have to do something. Uh, I'll just permute all uh, rows except the first one randomly. Okay. Uh, is this idea? Why not? Yes, the planetary solution is still always on the path starting from the distinguished source. So it cannot be uh, uniform over all solutions. Okay. But I claim that we don't have to do more work. This adoption still works because it's locally ideal. I will define that for you, but uh, we'll define that soon. And uh, all the more than a common notion. Um, and I want you to know something here that we have like more than what the ideal reduction, not more than what the ideal reduction asks for, but specifically one property that we needed. We have more than that. We have the number of solutions uh, is exactly one plus the handling weight of the input. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can. Yeah, I think we can get through this time. So, so let me define two polynomials. Uh, one is the expectation of polynomial I showed you, but over the distribution defined by R reduction. Uh, the other is this polynomial, but with the distribution defined by some idea reduction. And the claim that these polynomials are equal. Okay. Um, why? So it's enough to show that these expectations define the same thing for every monomial, same polynomial for every monomial, just by the idea of expectation. Okay. I will show that these two quantities are equal by saying that uh, just that the marginal distribution over, oh sorry, so let me first, yeah, we can assume that the degree of this monomial is sub polynomial. If it wasn't, that meant that when I started my proof of contradiction, then I had a polynomial degree mass and such proof, which beats the point. There's nothing to prove that. Okay. So what I will uh, show is that the marginal distribution for these two reductions, for distribution term on these reductions, is the same for all variables read by this term. Okay. For why? This monomial reads sub polynomial li many variables. So, in particular, there is some row in the middle, let's say. After n by three and below, before to n by three, where this monomial reads none of the variables. And so, what I can do is I can just relabel the um, active vertices in these two rows with a random bijection. Um, and this monomial has no idea what happened, it doesn't know what I did. Uh, so once I do this random bijection, now on the last row, it just I impose the uniform distribution. That's that's it. That's uh, the, the I claim that I prove uh, that SOPL has high approximate maximum plasticity, in particular polynomial. 
I think I'd like to stop here. Okay. Uh, no concluding slide or future direction or something. Or... Oh right. Oh yeah. I should. Uh, I'll plan to do that in the second half, but I think some people may not be attending. So yeah. Um, I can. Sorry about this. I can. Um, show you this slide. Okay. So what are some open problems? Um, here's the picture of the DFMP hierarchy with the proof complexity equivalence to the uh, Some open problems are, we don't know how to do all characterizations between DFMP and proof complexity still. Uh, currently, we don't have a proof complexity characterization of CPP or UEOPL. We don't have an actual DFMP problem corresponding to sum of squares. And we didn't have one for polynomial calculus until this bus coming in by our paper. There are some problems in DFMP, which I don't know where to put. Um, in particular, we don't exactly know how weak pigeonhole fits into this. There are some extremal combinatorics problems corresponding to Ramsey theory and sunflower lemma, uh, which we don't know how it fits in here. There were some there were multiple papers trying to address these questions recently, I guess. And I think perhaps most famously, um, we know that factoring is in DFMP, but we don't really understand where it lies in the hierarchy. We have some random reductions to PPP and PPA, but that's not. Okay, I have. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, we can take questions also from uh, like people who want to unmute and speak and ask questions, or if you want to put something in the chat, then I'll try to read it out and see if I'm successful. Uh, so uh, let me just start off. So, so these uh, like these questions that you mentioned, they're over on the TF and P side, I guess. And you're saying like there we have very limited information of like how they would be compared to the rest of like compared to this beautiful structure that you're showing us here. So like, we don't know much. Yeah, for these problems, we don't really, uh, yeah, we don't have, I don't kind draw nice uh, diagrams for you. Yeah. Somewhere between the FP and TF and P, but not much more. Yes. Exactly. Uh, do you think like, is, uh, it should be the optimistic that, like, do you believe that if we just think about the, like the right proof complexity tools that we can somehow, you know, that would be a, promising way to attack this? Or are um, there like the new proof systems waiting to be discovered that correspond to these? Yeah, I would be optimistic about new proof systems uh, waiting to be defined because in particular, we were able to capture SOTL as a very natural proof system which requires the virtual resolution. So I think, yeah, I think we probably just need um, people to think about this more. I mean, it's not clear that all of the TM all of the TFMP problems I care about uh, will have good proof systems because some of them just don't behave that nicely. So in particular, uh, we don't, I think we don't believe that PPP is close under during reductions and that means it's, it would be kind of murky to try to get a proof complexity characterization. But that's just uh, means we need to maybe define, make a new definition which captures both PPP and has a proof complexity. But like with, with the same paper, this bus, let me guess a bit, but there is a proof system captures it, right? It's just that it's not very natural. Yes. Uh, yeah, that's true. I guess when I said a nice proof complexity iteration, I meant by natural proof. Yeah. Uh, in particular, yeah. Okay. Anyway. So, so somehow you're saying in a formal sense, BFI like gives the proof system, but it might not be like yeah. it doesn't necessarily taste right. Is what you're saying? Yeah, it's un it's unclear how to like one mechanical way to figure out things would be translate their reduction for do their reduction for PPP, get a proof system, and study where that lies in a hierarchy of proofs, right? and figure out what. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. What if I change DT into some other 
if I change the word deep sea to some other assets, any picture of Yes, so um, this is just uh, maybe a bit picking that mm -hmm. off of this ITCS paper called Adventures. Mm -hmm. But um, if you look, there are like communication analogs of all these TFNP subclasses. Um, so if I were some company, this DT or CT is just a, a notion of uh, constructible or simple reduction. Yes, it's no, it's a notion of both. It's a notion of both reductions and of succinctness. I need to be able to give you an exponential graph in a succinct manner. And uh, the white box model does that with circuits, and the black box model does that with decision trees. But you could also do it with communication protocols. Why is decision tree black box? Decision tree or, or no, 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 it's fine, but like it's like, um, um, I mean, is this how we, I guess, implement our particles? Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't have a good answer to that. Either. Okay, we can talk about it. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions? Otherwise, we're I think we're having like a, a five minute break, but I'm just checking if there's anything in the in the chat, which I don't see. So I have a quick question. Yes. I don't know if you can hear me. Yeah, um, okay. So the question is about um, yeah, uh, the encoding of uh, the formulas or something in Charlie Adams. So the Charlie Adams proof system. It seems that you don't care that much about um, how you encode the CNF formulas, or even if you use zero, one, or plus or minus one by, by linear transformation, something like that. So, is that due? Uh, so, first of all, am I correct that you don't care that much about the encoding? Or uh, yeah, as long as the encoding is like robust to like these low mm -hmm. depth reductions, it should be fine. Right. And so, and the other point is that okay, so. The, the fact that you don't care is because uh, the because of these uh, low depth reductions. So if you, you know, in Shirley Adams, uh, the, the full thing, I guess, the encoding uh, matters. You know, if you use a linear transformation plus or minus one or something like that, then the task of proving uh, lower bounds or even if that is able to simulate resolution is open. So everything changes. So the fact that you don't care is because of the fact that you are in polylog degree or something like that. I guess. Mm -hmm. I, I'm a bit confused by the fact that. Uh, so just just so, to make sure we're on the same page. Uh, so, so what yes. you're referring to, like, if I'm given a clause that is a basically, I can view that as summing over the literals and saying this is at least one, or yeah. I can like multiply, uh, I guess, one minus the literals for every literal, and then say that this polynomial has to vanish. And these are like oh, the additive and the multiple. Multiplicative translation, is that what you're referring to? I mean, you can also think as the multiplicative translation, but instead of uh, over zero, one, you could have uh, over plus and minus one. It's another encoding, I mean, you could do that. Uh, okay, yes. So, but it seems that um, uh, here, these should not matter that much towards the separations, if I'm correct, but I'm not super sure about this. So I, I wanted to ask, what's the role of uh, how you encode your formula in your setting? Okay, so I don't know too much about the open problems you mentioned and proof techniques being different for the second encoding. But all I can say is that I care that no matter how you encode it, I can translate it back to my encoding using a uh, low depth mm -hmm. uh, okay. Yeah, I'm not sure how to comment on that. But I think that makes me remember a remark that I wanted to say is that. Mm -hmm. I think what is also nice about these TFMP characterizations is that you can sort of like hopefully do proof complexity with reduction. That's sort of like mm -hmm. one of the advantages mm -hmm. of these characterizations. I think that mm -hmm. sort of in a, in a more robust sort of sweeping these kind of syntactical details under the rug. Is that what you're saying? And more like think semantically. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I prefer thinking algorithmically and semantically, and I think that this enables mm -hmm. you to do that. 
and perhaps that's something that's underexploited. Um, yeah. So, and, and the other question is, so PPADS uh, is uh, basically equivalent to polylog degree unary Shirley Adams. Do, yeah. do you think, do you have a framework for, um, for capturing the whole thing? Like an, instead of three depth, I don't know, three size or something like that? Uh, by whole thing, you mean the I, I, I mean the, the whole uh, unary Shirley Adams, for instance. Instead of being low degree, like uh, arbitrary oh. degree. No, I think the way that these um, correspondences work, we would expect uh, to capture only the degree measures of whatever proof system you're considering in the polylogy. Okay. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? <laughs>